Mike Davis is having a bad year. IU lost to Wake Forest by 33 earlier this season. This one managed to top that. It was the worst loss of Davis's career. Taking on Tubby Smith, the Wildcats ranked number one and living up to it. First half, Indiana's Marshall Strickland with his eyes on the ball. Ball you man, Marshall, ball you man. Elena Azubuki cuts back door and hit 11 points. Kentucky up six at halftime. It's still close. Thank you. Second half, though, that's Chuck Hayes picking and rolling. Hit a career-high 22 points and 10 rebounds. Kentucky pulling away. Cliff Hawkins steal the inbounds. Gerald Fitch, that's a no-look. Eric Daniels blocks this shot. They go down the other end. Daniels will get it back. He had 19. Kentucky outscored Indiana 48 to 15 in the second half. 80 to 41, the worst loss of Mike Davis's coaching career. Iona College. You look kind of young to own a college. At UConn, Ben Gordon rebound. Charlie Villanueva. And this, right. this is what happens when you have a large head. <laughs> It goes right back through. Oh, it's got its own weather system. No bucket. Heat, move. Pamper, no. Ben Gordon, Jambalaya. First triple double for Ben, and UConn wins by a whole bunch. By City. Number three, Fitty. Duke, taking on Texas at Madison Square Garden. The killer D's. First, Duhon and Lowell Dang. First half, Duhon. Duke shot 62% in the first half, then Dang to Shavlik Randolph. Oh, 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 two of his 10. Next possession, Duhon. Behind the back to Dang. The Killer D's with a top 10 nominee. Dang had 12. Dukey's up 17. Final seconds, first half, Duhon. This is a great take. He had 15 points and nine assists. Blue Devils up 19 at halftime. Second half, Duhon. Great vision. It's Sheldon Williams. Ride me big Sheldon. Sheldon. Duke wins 89-61. They get to 8-1, 20 for J.J. Rennick. No, number seven, Kansas taking on Cal Santa Barbara. This one of 26 gaucho turnovers. And freshman J.R. Davis posterizes Joe C. Oh, oh. Oh. oh, say can you see Giddens at 15, still in the first wing. Simeon breaks up the play. Kansas trying to go the other way, and then they turn it back over. This was ugly. Simeon did have 15 points and 16 boards, though. A nice effort. Later in the first, Casey Cook in the paint. True. Double foul. He led the Gauchos with 16. 28, 24, 18. Kansas at halftime. Second half, Keith Langford, two of his 19. Jayhawks shot 62% in the second half. Giddens throws this one down, and Kansas will win 72-52. So KU plays Nevada on Sunday night in the title game. Number four, North Carolina, hosting number nine, Wake Forest. There's Roy's first ACC game after coming over from Kansas. Second half, Eric Williams to Trent Strickland. He had 15. Wake leads 88 to 86. They're fired up. 25 seconds to go. Raymond Felton. Jawad Williams, 17 for Williams. We're tied at 88. 2.6 left. Sean May. He throws it out of bounds. So Wake will get another shot to win this thing in regulation. 2.2 to go. Chris Paul from long range. This for the win. Clank. We will go to overtime, and that will be a recurring theme. In OT, Carolina down four. Rashad McCants, for three. Tar Heels down one. It's 199. McCants again. He had 25. Tar Heels up 103, 102. 15.8 to go. Raymond Felton at the line. An 80% free throw shooter on the season. His first shot. In and out. Second attempt. No good as well. Wake still alive. Skip Prosser. And I get the get the man a beverage. UNC up two. Chris Paul for the tie. Big block by David Noel. It's a top 10 nominee. Playing his first game of the year. It's still a two-point game. Less than five ticks to go. Chris Paul for three. Elbow foul. He had 18. Take another look. Melvin Scott fouls Paul, who's clearly behind the strike. He can put the Demon Deacons up. He's an 84.8% free throw shooter coming in. Hit the first, missed the second. One more here. Remember, he was a attempting a three-point field goal, so he gets three free throws. We're going to a second overtime. Second OT. Tied at 104. Felton. Backdoor pass. 22 for Felton. Carolina up 106, 104. 40 seconds left. Felton draws the foul. Appears to be injured on the play. Cramping up with all these overtimes. He was not able to shoot the free throws. So McCants, who's a 70% free throw shooter, coming in to take the freebies. McCants is first. Short rim. Second one. In and out. Tar Heels up two. Less than 20 seconds to go. Eric Williams down low for the Demon Deeks. 
13 players scored in double figures in this game. That tied it. Five seconds left. Melvin Scott, no good. We go to a third overtime. Just over a minute to go. Melvin Scott again for three. That one goes. He had 16, even at 114 apiece. Same score. Less than 40 to go. Eric Williams inside. He was 11 of 18 from the floor. Wake Forest up by two. Less than 20 seconds to go. Teron Downey fouled. He's a 90% free throw shooter. He will shoot two. Can he seal it? It's a three-point game. His second attempt. Tar Heel still have some life. Williams had finished with 24. Point five to go. Oh. Felton. As it knocked away. And Wake Forest will win in three overtimes. What a game for Skip Prosser and his Demon Deeks. If that is a precursor um, for the next 50 years of ACC basketball, uh, wow. Obviously, I can't be more proud of our players. Um, as I told our kids, I've been doing this for 30 years. I've never seen anything, anything quite like that. 119 to 114 in triple overtime, the most points ever allowed by North Carolina. Wake and the Tar Heels combined for 233 points. That's just one point off the all-time conference record set by Maryland and NC State 25 years ago. Famer Pete Newell is renowned for his big man camps, but in the weekend tournament named after Newell in Oakland, game one between Gonzaga and Stanford is about great guard play. Gonzaga's Blake Steff entered as the best guard on the court and 18 points away from passing John Stockton for 12th place on the all-time Gonzaga points list. 7-1 Gonzaga, 6-0 Stanford. First, they must deal with Stanford's number 42. Muscles inside. Creatine's working. Here he is again. Who is this guy down low? And he's little. Yeah, for a bloated woolly mammoth. 6'10", 260. Not so little. Early first half, little again. And, uh, excuse me. <laughs> Got to get down the other end of the court. Late first half, clock running down, top 10 nominee. Oh, with the left, no, but there. Justin Davis with a big finish. Stanford up the break by 12, in control. Matt Lodick from the suburbs, squish. Lodick, he's got a Lodick more. Back haul on the back drop pass. Stanford by 15, Lodick, he was the best guard on the court. Squish again, career high 34, six of seven on his threes. Step up, Blake. NBA threes. He did pass Stockton on the all-time Zag list. He had 20, but not enough. Lodick sets up Davis. Stanford wins by seven, 87-80. A historic day at Pauley Pavilion where UCLA was hosting Michigan State. The court named after John Wooden and his late wife, Nell. I'm proud of the fact that this floor is being named for my late Nellie. And I, I know what made this day possible is those young men down there. Won 10 national championships, including seven in a row. Second half, T.J. Cummings, 13 in his first start of the season. More than 70 of Wooden's former players on hand. UCLA beats the Spartans, 64-58. Wisconsin has won three straight, including back-to-back -back victories against Wisconsin Green Bay and Wisconsin Milwaukee. Yeah, happy birthday, Coach. But uh, Bono's consternation on this day is not in a good mood. Look at this. We're going to need some major Botox injection in a few years if you keep that. Furl brow going. No Taz. <laughs> Second half, 42 39. Devin Harris with the ball. That's Andreas Helmig. Uh, no one sets a pick like Andreas Helmig. No, I've always said that. Mm. Harris, top 10 nominee. Let me some sugar. I am your neighbor, Steve. <laughs> Six of 18. Listening to Ludicrous again? <laughs> That's outcast. Oh, Second half, 57 53, Wisconsin. Travis Diener, four of eight from three point land. Marquette was nine of 18. They're down by one, however. Zach Morley, Lando Tucker. Tucker with 17 12 in the second half when it mattered most. Under 20 left. Diener, Steve Novak. Not a lot of lift on this jump shot. And look, it goes in and out. Oh, bless his heart. Must be the sickest man in America. Bo Ryan, much, much happier. Happy birthday, coach. Finals of the Wolfpack Holiday Classic. Kansas hasn't lost to an unranked non-Big 12 team 
since the preseason NIT. That was against North Carolina. This That was in 2002. You see a couple of turnovers there. It's going bad. Kirk Snyder with a three from the corner. Nevada is slaughtering the Beakers. Snyder again. Give me all three of these. Nevada in a shocker. Snyder had 29 points. And there is Bedlam in Reno. An early season upset as Nevada gets the win. The Mel Muhammad. Uh-oh. <laughs> Youngblood likes to talk. Uh-oh. First half, keep an eye on him. Jared Jack misses. Muhammad goes for the putback dunk. Can't quite get there. Don't worry, it's coming. I, be I bet he gets one. Check on the break. Jack throws the alley, and this ain't right. <laughs> He's the best dunker in the country, I'm Off telling the bench, you. Eight points, 12 boards. Remix it a couple of times. Uh -oh. No, one more again. Tech wins. Yo, Boomer, I got an idea. Put that in your top 10 plays of the week. Just something about the subject of Steve Alford that doesn't seem to sit well with Bobby Knight, at least since the kid went into the coaching business. The relationship between the former Hoosier, now Texas Tech coach, and his former player has been scrutinized and analyzed for years now. There was a rift. There wasn't a rift. They don't speak, they speak. Things aren't good, things are good. Monday, before the Iowa Tech game, Fran Fraschilla set the two men down, and the subject was once again discussed and cussed. There was a perception, Steve, when you went to Iowa that you two guys had drifted a little bit. Uh, how much was fact? How much was fiction? Let me answer that. You know, that is an absolute crock of bull. You know, you and people in the news media, all of you uh, dwell on some negative piece of bull like that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how Steve feels about it, but it just pisses me off. And you don't have to bleep one single word of this because we went to a thing at the Big Ten and Steve and I didn't even see each other at a Big Ten thing, and then it comes out of it that we don't talk to each other. So all you media people can go f yourselves when it comes to something like that. When you people in the media have tried to make some issue out of something and have gone to Steve uh, thinking that, that he's going to add to the issue, he's done absolutely nothing but detract from it. And from the time Steve graduated in 1987 until the present, I've had no one that has been more supportive of me or what I've tried to do uh, than Steve has been. Well, we beat just to be safe. And as you see, friends there as the Hawks win to love it to take on Tech. Knight, 2-0 all-time against Alford. Here in the first half, his team up eight already. Ronald Ross gets to Dondre Emmett and the foul. Texas Tech up 37-26 after the freebie. Pierre Pierce, oh, that's nice cutting through the lane. He, too, is fouled. Iowa down 52-44. Moments later, Pierce going to get loose again, make a fine top-10 nominee layup, and then you see maybe to motivate his team, the general, with a little corporal punishment on him. Mr. Emmett. Emmett responding. The spin move and the J. He had 23 points. Tech up nine at that point. They're going to go on and win it. Bob Knight. Talk about beating your former player, please. I don't want Steve to lose. When I look in the, in the uh, newspaper, uh, which is about the only thing I ever look at in a newspaper, is the scores. And I always want to see Iowa on the left-hand side. So when they're not going to be on the left-hand side this time, uh, I'll feel for Steve with that or any of these guys that I've had to coach against that way. Tech wins at 65-59. I think that all went well, don't you, Steve? Smooth. Yeah, thank you. Hugs and kisses all around. Florida State visiting their traditional rival, Pittsburgh. Both came in at 10-0. Carl Krauser, the drive and the floater. Krauser led all scores with 17 on 6-10 shooting. Florida State would keep it close. Nate Johnson, look around, pull up for three. Johnson finished with 12 points, four of six shooting himself. Later in the sec, Pitt's going to put it away. Jaron Brown to Chris Taft. Pitts off to their best start since the 29-30 season. Northeastern 13th ranked Florida and David Lee. And the 12 shots of Christmas was shooting out of his pear trees. One for one. And then he's still up. Two for two. Inside dunk. Trey for Trey. Not bad. Then a little lay-in. Calling for it again. Lee scoop in the lane. Rings up a fifth. Then a hook in the lay. Yeah, lays in two more, six for six. Seven for seven, yeah, things still going swimmingly, and then milks it for another one. Eight for eight, lead, drive, lay in. Gator fans dancing at their team's 57-33 halftime lead. Leaping for another layup, he was 10 for 10. Then Matt Walsh pipes up with an assist. 11 for 11, finally, it was a drumming. 12 for 12, and Florida wins it. 101-84, Lee finishes with 24 points. 
State, Arizona, U of A 3-0 at home this season, but 7-13 under Lute Olsen in their final game before the Christmas break. So, first half, Arizona 3, see if we can solve that. That'll help Hassan Adams with the jam and a top 10 nominee. Salim Stoudemire to Mustafa Shakur. He, too, is dunking. Apparently, it was dunk practice time because Andre Iguodala, he, too, with the short shot. Wildcats up 15, later Arizona up 17. And, well, it's going to be a Merry Christmas from way out there. Adams hits it. He had 19. U of A, easy, 83-71. Oregon and Portland, no numbers next to them, neither ranked as of this second. One-point game, James Davis from three, and the foul he would convert the four-point play. Davis, five of eight from three land. Here's Davis between his legs to Luke Jackson for the lay-in. Davis at 18 points and three assists. Check it out again. Davis, nifty, between the legs, behind his back, and in rhythm. Second half, Ducks up 11. Jason Work and Patrick Gallows going baseline. Jackson, 19 points, eight rebounds. The Ducks a winner. Also in their favor, every first-year coach has won the bragging rights game. Bruce Weber is in his first season at Illinois. Top 20 matchup from Savage Center in St. Louis. As seen on ESPN2, with Quinn Snyder's fifth bragging rights game. Luther had to D. Brown. Brown had 14 points in the first half. Then Brown showing off his range. How's that for a deep three? Hey, Dickie V, what about those first 20 minutes for Brown? First half, D. Brown was sensational. He was unstoppable with his great quickness, ability to shoot the basketball, and then you had the factor as well where Missouri didn't defend and he didn't execute. Second half, though, Missouri would fight back within seven. Jimmy McKinney with a shot clock winding down. It was a five-point game. Make it a three-point game. Missouri turns it over. Brown on the break. Ricky Paulding from out of nowhere. One of the great blocks you'll see all college basketball season. Trayvon Bryant from three. Tied the game at 67. Here we go. One minute left. Nick Smith, nice look to James Augustine for the lay in Illinois up two. Less than 30 seconds left. Arthur Johnson down low, in and out. Illinois the rebound. Brown was fouled. Here's Bruce Weber's thoughts. Hopefully this puts us over the hump and the kids will believe in us and, and we're going to move forward. We said by Christmas we wanted to be good and now it's Christmas. We can enjoy it. Illinois gets the bragging rights for the fourth straight year. Close in proximity only. Number one in the land, Kentucky, against Eastern Kentucky. Travis Ford is coaching Eastern Kentucky. He used to play at Kentucky. Cliff Hawkins, lob pass. Eric Daniels, the one-handed alley-oop. Daniels at 15 in the game. Kentucky up 15. Daniels, 40-foot bounce pass. Bang, right there. You don't see that every day. Hawkins had 16 points in the game. Kentucky up 50. Watch the ball movement. Carrier to Hawkins. Azubuki, Hayes, Daniels. It's like Hoosiers all over again. Everybody touches and the layup. Second half, Kentucky's up 33. Gerald Fitch, the double pump layup goes. Fitch led all scores with 26. Kentucky wins as you would expect.